Welcome to College Game Day. I'm Cade McKee here today with Sam Daniel and head coach of the Wisconsin Badgers, Josh Davis, descendant of Big Mike D. We're here for the national championship game between Clemson and Nebraska. With Jarrell Jackson averaging 65 points a game and Austin Fletcher averaging 31 points a game, we're looking at an explosive game. Jarrell has a high-powered offense, has had points put up on against a and He gave up 59 points. Austin Fletcher's played more low-scoring games, so we're going to see what style of gameplay is going to be played. It could be anything. We don't know yet. We'll have to see. Okay. With both teams being pretty solid competitors, uh, we know that Jarrell is a very high-scoring uh, type of offense, and then Fletch, he seems to be really uh, dependent upon his defense. So I think it'll be a pretty solid game. And you know, previously in the tournament, I played Jarrell. He actually beat me. I was Texas a and You know, his defense, I, I was able to score 59 points in the game. He was able to get some stops early that really messed with my flow of the game, got me mad, caused me to get unfocused for a bit in the game. Absolutely. We know that Jarrell is able to get in the head of his opponents, and we've seen that early on in this tournament. But. With his high-powered offense and his dominating tight end also being compared to Aaron Fernandez, you know, we're not really sure what he will bring because last game he played against Coach Daniel, and Coach Daniel was also the Clemson Tigers. The tight end was almost, almost like he wasn't there. He was depending heavily on the run game, and it was a good OT game, but it was more low scoring, so we'll see if Nebraska can get got the film together and saw what, what Coach Daniel was doing to try and stop him and keep keep him contained and his tight end. Well, another interesting thing about Jarrell is, you know, Big Mike in the first round was not competition. 100 points, scored up. Big Mike threw like 12 picks. Second game, Texas A&M known to not have very good defense. That's why they went 7-5 and five that year. Uh, gave up 59 points. He scored 63, but then Thomas got a hold of him. And how many, how many points did he score? 30, it was 31 to 24 in uh, OT, and last that last game that Jarrell played, uh, it actually went down to the wire. Uh, Thomas is tied in, dropped a dropped a game tying touchdown. Aaron Hernandez dropped it. He's been he's been compared to Aaron Hernandez with his skill set, but he dropped a, he dropped a touchdown in the end zone to Damn. lose the game. He didn't, drop and, he didn't drop anything against me, man. You know, if he were to catch that, say, Tom, say Thomas would he kick the PAT or go for two, you know, it very well could be Thomas sitting, you know, sitting in this national championship now. So we're just going to have to see how the game is played, like I said. One depends upon the defense. The Nebraska depends upon their defense. Clemson is very high scoring. And uh, we're just going to have to see who can control the game. It'll have to have to be a lot of field position. Yeah, but we know Fletch is good on D. Very yes. good on his defense. And Darrell has three different scoring, 100, 60, 30. I mean, he was high scoring in the first two games, not as in the second game. So what's he gonna do when he gets a really good defense thrown out? So like, does that give Fletch an advantage his defense? Or does he give an advantage to Darrell's offense? That's I mean, the thing, that's the thing. Have to wait to But no matter, no matter how good the defense though, Sammy Watkins playing against him, trying to stop that man is almost impossible. I mean, trying to guard him right down the middle, it's a it's a solid competitor. And as of now, we got to look at their opponents and who they played and who they've beaten and what they've done to get to this point. Uh, Austin Fletcher played Scott in the first round. Scott was Texas, and that was a nail biter down to the wire. Scott kicked the field goal to go up three nothing at the beginning, made him sweat a little bit, literally, and. Uh, then he had, in, in round two, he played against uh, Clay, and that was another nail biter. I mean, tensions were high that yeah, night. You right. couldn't say a word no. without them going off. Or, or they nothing. were mad. They were focused. I've never focused. seen Clay more mad. Luckily, awesome. <laughs> Luckily, Fletch was to. Fletch can completely take the PAT out of the game, and that was the thing. Yeah. He's had six. That is. Or is it six touchdowns and not a single PAT that he? That was huge that game. That that's what won him the game. And he picked off a he picked off a two point conversion. Sure Clay scored more touchdowns in the game. He than did. Fletch he, and Fletch won. Oh yeah, he did. I mean, he totally took away PATs, which could be will that be a factor in I mean in the championship game? If you and bring that and as big deal is a special team wins the game. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, special teams. Special teams, teams, are, teams are going to be huge. And you heard it right there from the greatest special teams coach of all time. Fletch has had had some tough games, especially Clay. 
And Jarrell has also played against, uh, besides Mike when he dropped 100 points, beat him by 82. I think he's had some pretty difficult opponents as well. Uh, playing Johnny Manziel at AM, and Heisman favorite that year. And uh, that was a four point game, although he did lead by like 22 at one point, I think. And then he went on to play Thomas, who's also a very, very uh, experienced in the game. So he's been playing as long as anybody here. And uh, he knew he had a solid game plan for Jarrell, but Jarrell got out with the dub. And uh, I'm excited to see what, what Jarrell brings to the table here. So I think, uh, personally, I think Jarrell has had the harder schedule uh, besides Fletcher. Fletcher's played the hardest game. Coach Fletcher's played the hardest game against Clay. He has. But I think overall, in the, whenever Jarrell played against Thomas and Cade, those are two very good opponents that a lot of people don't – don't talk about. They just talk about how he dropped 100 points on Mike, which is kind of disrespectful to me. What do you guys think? I mean, I totally agree. I thought that that second round matchup he had was a tough one. I mean, if it wasn't for that tight end, seriously, that tight end in that game beat Texas A&M. So he did. I think if you eliminate the tight end from that game, that Texas A&M is sitting in the finals right now. Exactly. But that, that's a story for another day because I can't change what happened. But I think Jarrell has played the tougher schedule because, I mean, I don't know Ethan B, but I know that me and Thomas are both very skilled at the game because, I mean, we've played it a lot in our time. It's it's something that we dedicate a lot of time to, so we're good at it. I just, I'm giving it to Jarrell on the tougher schedule. Yeah, and back to what you were saying about the tight end, you know, on and off the field, he's been compared to Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> you know, we've we checked his records. He does have some criminal, you know, records, and he was he was very dominant in football. So, you know, he really has been. So I'm looking for Aaron Hernandez's comparison for Clemson to have a really big time game. He's a big time target, no pun intended, and uh, I'm really excited. What do you say about Sammy Watkins? Yeah, if not for him. And now, uh, Coach Davis, as you've played both teams this year in the regular season, what do you have to say about the teams? Well, obviously, what I've said about Clemson is Sammy and then this tight end that y'all are making comparisons to Aaron Hernandez. Uh, you're going to have to key down on two guys. You're going to have to double-team Sammy on the outside, and you're going to have to lock it down the middle with the uh, tight end. But, uh, I mean, coming from Jarrell's high-scoring uh, games, it seems that, you know, Fletcher here might have the upper hand. I don't know. Maybe Jarrell's defense will pick up. We'll see. All right, Josh, you played, like I said earlier, you played both of these teams in the regular season. Personally, what do you think Jarrell needs to do? What was your scheme when you went into the game? And what advice would you have if you were a coach for this team to, to soft the up? So what we did was we, we ended up losing this. We ended up losing this game. Uh, but what we did was we tried to lock down on the run, uh, but that left open to play action for Jarrell. I think shutting down the run and then them trying to work on, you know, making them have to rely on their two key options, the tight end and then the wide receiver, Sammy Watkins. Uh, you lock them down, the run game's locked down. We tried to go with the man-to-man, -man, you know, Monty McIntyre defense, didn't work out. They had too many options, and so you might have to switch it up to a zone. So you have played Nebraska as well. What would your defensive scheme be if you were playing in this game tonight that you could correct from your last game that you played against them? I would say trying to keep Taylor Martinez, you know, Heisman candidate, you know, he's up there in the polls, uh, trying to keep him locked down in the pocket. You can't let him escape the pocket. You know, he's quick, he's elusive, and you can't let him get it downfield. you got to keep him trapped up in that pocket, keep his options limited, and uh, make him try to run the ball. I've watched – I've also watched just about every game uh, – Coach Fletcher has played in. I think that the triple option, he, he brings a, a slot in motion, and he'll he'll run the triple with his single back on, off a two by two set. He he relies on that heavy. I know he relies on slip screens, and he'll take what you give him for sure. For sure. He's not going to just throw a bomb out of nowhere. You know, he's going to take what you give him every play, barring the circumstances, whether it's before half or before the end of the game. But he's going to do what he can to get first downs and move the ball because as we have looked at his scores, he's not worried about fireworks and putting up a million points. He's, he's about taking what you give him, he's going to wind the clock a little bit, and he's going to come out with a win. That's what he's going to try and do here tonight. 
And like with Jarrell, he runs the heavy H back, the tight end in the backfield, and he runs that wheel route. But the good thing about Jarrell, especially when he played against me, was if he was in that formation and he saw that it was going to be covered, he's really good about being able to audible out into another play that works. At least he was against me. I'm not sure how he was in the first game against Thomas. I did not attend those games. But against me, he was very good at audibling. So Fletch is really good on D. So I'm anxious to see if he can take what he did against me and use it against Fletch because I couldn't stop him. And, and like you said, he, he has he can audible. Taj Boyd has a very good relationship with his receivers. And the chemistry is, is unlike anything I've seen in NCAA. He, he can hot route just about anybody. Somebody will be open. If, if he recognizes your defensive scheme and catches on to it, which is what he did to Cade, and which is what he did to Mike. Now with Thomas, Thomas was pretty locked down with him, and uh, he relied more on the run game. So I think as far as the chemistry goes with Clemson, I think chemistry is better in Clemson, South Carolina, than it is in Nebraska, you know? Now with Nebraska running a pistol, I think you need to watch out for, you know, Martinez's legs, uh, him running the option, no play actions. Uh, then they're going to eat up as many yards as they can get. They're going to try to break down the defense. That's where you got to try to get turnovers within this game. The last thing I'm going to point out before we move on with this sh uh, show is Fletch has had 60-year dynasties on NCAA 14. So... Whatever team he's with, he has chemistry. Cause I mean, he was thirty years in at Ole Miss one time, packed up, took it, took it to Nebraska, and played with them ever since. I mean, he's got the chemistry. So I just think both teams have really good chemistry, and it's going to be tough to really get in the heads of either of any of these teams. Yeah, I mean, I would say that I would agree with you there. But whenever you look back at how Texas A and M acted when they got down, and their head coach especially, I mean. It was, it was right. crazy, you That's know. Right. It was, it was ludicrous right. down there on that sideline. It was. We all know it that. Was. And, uh, you know, so I guess we're just going to have to see tonight. You know, for the, for the end of the show, who do you got? Who do you got in the Man, National Championship? For $1,000, who do you got? Man, Jarrell knocked me out of this. I took this thing real serious. Jarrell knocked me out. I think he's capable of winning it. But it's Fletch all day. Fletch all day. Flex is gonna take home the money. I also take the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Y'all are insane. Chemistry, biology, anatomy, it doesn't matter. I'm going with old Clemson Tigers. We're going 38, 24, Jarrell Jackson for the win. He's making a 1K. He's got the money in the bag. A band to Jarrell, that's, uh, that's your prediction? Yep. All day. I'm gonna go with a band uh, to all Coach Fletcher and his uh, program up in Nebraska. Fletch, all the way. Who knows? On to, Pas on to Pasadena, California for the Rose Bowl National Championship.